Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, Steve Lewis here, Relevance for today. Thanks for tuning in to another show. Got a great for- show for you today. I want to share something really important with you folks. I did a, I did a write-up. I write for, for God's Glory Alone Ministries. You can find them right online. And I have over, I think over 300 or 400 writings there now. But I wrote some pieces that are very important and it really touched some lives it uh, really sparked some fire underneath some folks. And so I just wanted to do a show about one of the actual write-ups that I did to encourage everybody, especially in this season that we're in right now, the season that we're going to be stepping into is one of those years. It's 2022. We've got a lot going on. As many of you know, here in the United States, November is coming around the corner. And so I wanted to write some motivation as well as a wake up call because we all need to be reminded of the smoke and mirrors and to pay attention to what's going on all around us. Make sense? So here we go. We're going to jump right in. So this morning as I was reading the word and I was writing in my journal, I sit down, I read the Bible and uh, right now I'm in the New Testament, been reading some of the Pauline writings which is the writings by the Apostle Paul. And so as I'm writing, I get some nuggets. Holy Spirit will show me some nuggets, give me some nuggets as I'm reading the Word. Scripture will pop out at me in a way that will cause me to get my pen and paper out so I can start writing some notes and get some good nuggets for some podcast episodes as well as some TV shows. And so while I was doing that, and I also have my journal handy and I have a notepad handy because every once in a while, like I said, I'll be reading, I'll take some notes in my study notebooks, but then also I'll get that nugget. So I'll have another notebook. It's kind of crazy, but I'll have another notebook sitting there and I'll be writing in that one as well. And so I'm journaling. I've got my journal out. I've got everything out and I'm just sitting back on the furniture, relaxing and doing that. And one of the things I noticed, I couldn't help but think of the upcoming months here in America. And this happens all over the world, but I'm focusing on the United States right now. We've got a lot going on. If you're watching the news and you're from other countries, then you know what's going on. And so as we get ready to do the voting thing and things like that, once again, for candidates who will help govern our nation, we have to be careful. We have to pay attention. And we have to stay focused. And so instead of being excited, I immediately thought of, gee whiz, you know, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, in the next seven to eight weeks, we're going to see the ugliest side of humankind, of mankind. It's crazy. We're going to be bombarded through the news, the newspapers, the radio, TV, Sadly, even in our mailboxes, the worst side of humanity, social media, uh, we learned a big lesson years ago, and I've noticed that people don't hate on each other as much as they used to when it comes to politics because of a lot of fake news that went around and things like that. And it's a big wake up call in the United States because things were revealed. We got to realize that you can't trust everything you see which is really important because you just don't want to take every single thing in. You take all this stuff in and before you know it, you're ready to explode. You're hating people that you didn't even realize aren't even guilty of doing anything. And it turns into this love-hate relationship with different people. And then one side's with one group, one side's with the other. And it ends up being a complete nightmare. And so these next weeks, sadly, it's going to be filled with manipulation hatred, persuasive tactics, bribery, finger pointing, 
shaming of certain individuals, and much more. And what I mean by that is you're just going to see it. You, If you're paying attention, instead of it being about, hey, Steve Lewis, he's doing a great job with the podcast, he's got the TV show, he's reaching people around the world, he's preaching to folks in Pakistan. Instead of it being about that, it'll be about this guy back here. See my little guy over here? my little Groot, it'll be about him or my fake candles because my fake candles aren't real candles on the podcast studio. Or it'll be about my poster with the, with the microphone on it. So instead of pointing out the good qualities, it's going to be about pointing out the bad qualities. Well, Steve Lewis has over 200 podcast episodes and he's got this TV show now, but unfortunately, Sometimes he wears a collared shirt. Sometimes he wears a sweatshirt. Sometimes he's got this. Sometimes he's doing that. And he's on this platform and not that platform. And it turns into this picking at each other. And that's the goal. Because, for example, if we were different podcast you know, content creators, instead of saying, hey, I'm going to start following this guy because he's also got a Christian podcast and he's doing an amazing job. I'm going to try to tear him down to make myself look better so that you'll come over and listen to me instead. And that's what's happening with, unfortunately, politics. It's been happening for years. We just haven't noticed it. But the goal is to make you hate individuals. Hate them. Do you know who hate comes from? Satan. Causing you to literally hate people based on them standing up for certain things. Like standing up for the unborn child makes you the enemy of some folks. That's scary. Who would have ever thought in this day and age compassion would be rated so low that you can't go out and say, I stand up for an unborn child. I stand up for man and woman marriage. You know, that's my stance. I believe in the word of God. And the word of God says, right, you guys have heard me bring up that message a while back. Jensen Franklin said it straight. He pretty much said, hey, listen, I don't have an opinion. I stand on the word of God. They're not after me. They're after the word of God. That's what it's about. It's just coming out in the open right there in our face. Kaboom. And so the whole smoke and mirrors tactic where you have to make others, like I said, have to make others look bad so you will win a vote. It's pretty sad, and unfortunately, we're going to see it again, and one of my prayers is that people wake up. People will wake up and see what's going on and go, oh, wait a minute, you're trying to sucker me into hating this individual instead of me looking at what this individual is doing and how the country's going downhill. You're going to make me look at how much I should hate this other guy, so I'll continue to vote for you. And go bankrupt because my bills are insane. Because I can't heat my house. I can't put fuel in my tank or whatever it might be. And that's where the smoke and mirrors come from. You're, You're focused on one thing. You're struggling right now. But then all of a sudden the smoke gets foggy. Your eyes get fogged up and you can't see reality anymore. But all you can see is them pointing at other individuals trying to get you to hate other individuals. So instead, that's what happens. And I don't want to just keep talking about that the whole time, but it needs to be brought up. And, you know, we're living. Here's the key. We're living in the end times, whether Jesus returns today or 50 years from now. Either way, we're closer today than we were yesterday. And we have to remember that. And the enemy has an agenda. If you haven't figured it out by now, he has an agenda. And it does not include the Bible and Christ-like living. So don't be surprised about what you see in this world today. It's not about showing people who Jesus Christ is. It's about turning people away from Christ. It's about turning people away from from the kingdom of God. It's about turning people to the kingdom of darkness. That's what it's about. And it's just crazy how people can be so manipulated so easily. And it's due to hatred. You know, the word of God says, love your neighbor as yourself. Satan says, hate each other, tear each other apart, rip each other to shreds. 
You know, the media's goal, sadly, the media's goal in eh, about 70, 80, 90 percent, the media's goal will be to make you believe someone is bad and cause you to hate a person or nation so much that you automatically do your best to destroy that individual. And so you think to yourself, well, how do I destroy that individual? Well, you know how you vote against them. Yeah, I did my part. I hate that guy so bad or I hate that lady so bad. I'm not voting for them because I just don't like them. Well, why don't you like them? Well, the news said that this happened and that happened. Then you find out years later it's false. What do you do? You know? And of course, sadly, once again, the R word's going to come back out. And we all know the R word. Racism, right? Racism being called a racist, all this crazy stuff is going to come out now. It's crazy. It's going to be back in the headlines. You watch and see. They'll try to divide us once again based on the color of our skin. And I've talked about this before many times. Can you imagine something God created to protect our bodies? That's it. Skin is an organ, the largest organ on your body. To protect your body, your internal organs and everything, we're all different colors. But the goal of the skin is to protect the body. And yet the enemy knows, Satan knows what to do. I'm going to use that against man. Something God made so beautiful, no matter what color you are. Satan turned that around and have us fighting over it and treating each other differently just based on that alone. It's crazy, and it causes mass hatred around the world. I'm a broken record here. We've all heard this stuff. We've talked about this stuff many times before. You can hear it in my voice. Passionate about all this stuff. History is ugly. And as you guys know, you can go back and blame each other. This person can blame that one. No one is alive today that was involved in the beginning of slavery, period. They're all dead and gone. People were hurt. People were killed. Devastation took place on all sides. It's a mess. And scary part is if you go back and look in history, you're going to be woken up to realize that, oops, I guess it wasn't like we thought it was. You know, it's deep. But the bottom line is, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about all the people that were murdered from all walks of life based on the color of their skin. There's nothing we can do about that, but we have to move forward, learn from the past, focus on the future, focus on the word of God, loving our neighbor as ourself and going that way. We have to be alert to what the enemy is trying to do once again, especially, like I said, during these times, during election, voting, all these different things taking place where decisions have to be made. It's important that we look at that and we focus on the word of God. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, a true follower of Jesus Christ, focus on that. Don't focus on hating anybody. The minute you turn around and start acting like the world and hating on other people and you claim to be a Christian, you're disobeying God's word. You're disobeying what Jesus said, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And the second Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to hate on them based on what the news might tell you or based on what someone else votes on. You stay focused because the enemy is real and people know you have to admit it. If Satan's real, then you know our Heavenly Father is definitely real. And there's a saying, and you guys have heard it on movies in the past, and that saying is the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Isn't that crazy? You know what I mean by that? When I say that, when I repeat that statement, it's basically you you think it's just humankind doing these things to each other all the time, but where did that seed get planted for me to want to hate someone else based on who's who they're going to vote for? Where do you think that seed comes from where a person gets so angry because Steve Lewis says, I believe that Every child should have the right to live, especially the one who's in one of the most safest places in the world it used to be, which was the womb of a woman. A woman. God created man and woman. 
God created women to be pregnant, to have children. The man and the woman have sexual intercourse. They have a baby. Trust the science, the real science, the real science, the word of God, right? Adam and Eve had children. Yes, that's what happened. And it went from there. We have to be careful because the whole point is you're going to get your mind all twisted up and messed up in the smoke and mirrors. You put up some extra mirrors. Things don't look like what they did originally. Come to find out you're looking at the wrong mirror. There's smoke everywhere. You can't figure out what's going on. You're being misguided. You're being misled. And before you know it, you got a mess on your hands. Make sense? And the key thing is remember, you know, if you don't believe Satan exists, look around, watch the real news for a day, okay? And you will see the worst side of humanity, stealing, killing, destroying each other. I mean, there's places now in the world you can go in and rob a store as long as you take less than $1,000. They slap you on the wrist if they even bother to call them the police. It's crazy. What is the world coming to? It always reminds me of like watching RoboCop. RoboCop, the movie back in the day where they had the robot cop named Murphy. And pretty much everybody was just tearing everything up, destroying, no respect for one another, no love for the neighbor, just tearing each other apart, just letting everything go. Chaos, destruction while doing the smoke and mirror things and having us pointing in the different direction with us looking over here going, oh, wow, what's going on over there? When really something else is going on in the back scenes. You know, and sadly, in order to believe that the devil exists, you have to admit, and this is important, you have to admit that God exists. So many won't admit Satan even exists. And they'll continue to spiral downward. It's sad. But for those who wake up and realize the truth that I've been sharing and many have been sharing, there's hope through Jesus Christ. There's hope, folks. There is. There really is. You know, when you turn your life over to Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean, okay, poof, all of a sudden there's going to be roses and butterflies flowing around and milk and honey just pouring out of every wall and you're just living in a wonderland. No, we're still on a broken earth. The world is broken because of Satan. But at the same time, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have hope. When you ask Jesus Christ into your life, repent of your sins, you get the Holy Spirit living within you. Then you have that hope through Jesus Christ. So keep that in mind. And pay attention and stay focused. And of course, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, live by the Bible. Live by the Word of God. Focus on that. Pray and stand on the word of God. Don't stand on the word of man. Remember, the enemy is not after you. The enemy is after the word of God. I can't say that enough. And I've got some scripture I want to share with you folks. We've got Philippians 4, 6 through 7 out of the New American Standard. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and pleading with the thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. And also, I want to share some other verses with you because you can get in the Word and you can look up these verses. It can really help you in your walk. It can really help you with what's going on in the world right now today. So keep these in mind. So the first one's going to be Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14. So it says, Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. 
Then you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere. You hear that? Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. And then the end will come. Amen. Powerful, isn't it? And there's always that death and destruction and doom and gloom. But at the same time, if you hold strong to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, stay in your word. Love your neighbor, love God, love our Heavenly Father. You stay focused on that and stand on the Word of God and not your own opinion and focus on Him. You'll be fine. You'll be saved. You're saved. You'll be able to stay focused no matter what comes your way. You know when the Word of God gets through this earth, when the nations have heard the gospel, then the end will come. And then as a reminder of what we should stay away from and be doing can be found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 16. Very important reminders, folks, because sometimes we're sitting back, we're trying to live right, we're trying to do the right thing, and we've got to remember to stay focused and stay on track, and we think, well, how can we do this? How can I do this walk with the Lord? How can I do this? Remember this. So this is chapter 3, this is Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 16. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature, yes, and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are Jew or Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Amen. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. You hear me? That is key right there. That's part of this whole thing. I'm going to say that again. Start with verse 12. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, Stephen Lewis. So you must forgive others. And above all, clothe yourselves with love. There it is. Love, 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 love. Clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives, teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to finish on that powerful note right there. That's where it's at. Stay focused on the word. Don't let your head get twisted, folks. You hear me? Don't get wrapped up in the craziness. Don't get wrapped up in the past. We have to focus on the now. 
We have to focus on Christ crucified, raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father, forgiveness, love one another, focus on the Lord. Amen? Let's go ahead and pray. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for being able to share this message today. Pray for all my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. I pray for everyone to remove the scales, that the scales will be removed from our eyes, that the deceit, the smoke, the mirrors, all those different things that come up around this time when we're voting, when we're making decisions for our nation, come to play. May we be able to see what's going on with the spirit realm, with the enemy, with the demonic, all the different things that are going on that's just trying to destroy humanity. May we stay focused on you. May we stay focused on your word. And may many come to know you in a greater way as their Savior and Lord. I just thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for all my listeners, for all my watchers out there. Thank you that this is able to penetrate the lives of, the spirits, the loved ones, the friends, the family, the strangers of those that hear my voice. I just thank you for all of them. I pray a blessing over each and every one of them, that they'll come to know you in a greater way as their Savior and Lord, and that they'll be strong in the faith. And I thank you for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Truly appreciate it. Thanks for all of you sharing the word, spreading the word about Relevance for Today TV show over on Kingdom Community TV, as well as the podcast show on any podcast app. Also, don't forget, I reset Spiritual Spotlight podcast. We're now with Buzzsprout. All you have to do is look up Spiritual Spotlight Podcast, where I encourage you, inspire, and build you up in five minutes or less. So check Spiritual Spotlight Podcast out as well. Let's get connected, folks. Hey, thank you for all of you who are taking the time to share my shows with other people so that more can see them. And remember, if you get over to Apple Podcasts to listen to Relevance for Today or Spiritual Spotlight, please do me a favor. Leave me a rating because I've noticed what's happening is people are getting ratings on their shows and it pushes them up in the charts so that people can see them on a daily basis. So they've got like the charts that have 200, the top 200 Christian episodes or podcast shows out there. And so people will go just searching for that just to see what the popular ones are. So the guys like me are left in the bottom somewhere because not many have gone and done the ratings for us. So ratings and reviews, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for doing that for me and taking care of me that way. It really helps us get the word out. And hey, with that being said, hey, look forward to hearing from you folks. God bless you. Stay focused. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Peace.